Hi Nick. Hi Tom, how are we doing? I'm good, thank you. Good, fantastic to hear. Okay, so um, welcome to our first podcast um, here at Train Aid HQ. Um, as you can see behind us, this is a, a podcast on what makes a successful micro teach. Um, and Nick and I plan to be doing sort of plenty of these with some guest speakers along the way, just sort of going through some of the topics and subjects um, that are relevant for learners on our courses but also our followers and subscribers on social media that find our content um, really useful. Um, so Nick and I have both taught, taught on the uh, Level 3 of Warden Education and Training, previously Petals, taught a, a lot of courses um, between us, sat through hundreds of micro-teachers, and we often get asked, you know, what, what is the micro-teach, how do you prepare it, how do you actually produce a successful micro-teach and pass that practical assessment on the course? So we thought we'd just sort of um, share some of our ideas with you. Yeah, absolutely. So we've both got uh, five uh, points each, five of our top uh, tips each we would like to share with you. So if you're thinking of preparing for your micro teach, um, perhaps just watch uh, the next section of the video and we're just going to share what we've experienced over the years uh, view reviewing all of the different uh, micro teachers. Uh, would you like me to go first, Tom? Um, you can go first, yeah. So basically we've yeah. chosen five each, haven't we? Five each, um, yeah. Not necessarily in one to five order, but, you know, five key sort of tips from each of us what we think sort of will help you deliver um, a successful micro-teach. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I'm going to kick it off uh, with my first point, which is clear structure. Uh, so for any 15-minute uh, micro-teach, um, I believe... Uh, a successful micro teach has a clear aim and key objectives as well. So if you have a, a clear aim and a step-by-step -step, uh, approach and objectives, it's going to make you feel more relaxed and also your, your learners who you're delivering to um, are going to understand the, the content um, that you are going to be teaching. Um, I think at this stage, if you do have any questions, perhaps contact the train aid team, or if or if you're on one of our courses, speak to the tutor as well, um, just to find out which uh, aim is absolutely vital for, for your micro teach essentially. So I think with the, the aim, have a clear, clear aim and use words such as to investigate, introduce, rather than to, to understand, okay. Um, Tom, any advice on that? Yeah, for those, for those of you sort of watching this, maybe don't know exactly what objectives are um, in terms of a, of a lesson or a micro-teach. So your objectives really, when you talk about the structure of your course, is essentially what you expect or you hope your learners will be able to achieve by the end of a 15-minute micro-teach. Um, and a key point with the objectives, I guess, is sort of making them measurable. So rather than using the term understand, which can be quite sort of subjective, um, use measurable words such as sort of describe, define, demonstrate. So, for example, um, you know, my, my students by the end of 15 minutes would be able to list the ingredients um, involved to make a banoffee pie, for example. A bit random, but Perfect, something yeah. like that. Or by the end of it my students, my learners will be able to demonstrate how to successfully lift, um, you know, in terms of manual handling a box using the correct technique. Um, so if you've got your objectives, you've got your, you know, you know what you want to achieve by the end of the 15 minutes and that's the sort of start of your structure um, and making sure, you know, the lesson plan, um, you'll receive the template if you're on our calls, making sure you follow that um, step by step and, and, and you've got a clear idea um, in terms of the structure of your course and you know how long you can spend on each part, which we'll come on to in a bit, um, and it will make you more confident if you're nice and organised and it's and it's clear what you're doing. And absolutely, just on this point as well, I think just having a clear beginning, a uh, middle, and also an end uh, summary as well. So more often than not, with micro teach uh, lessons at the end of your uh, end of your micro teach, you'll find that many of your your learners that you're delivering to have lots of questions as well. So they'll be intrigued uh, by your subject area. So do allow for a little bit of take up time of questions at the end. So maybe factor in a minute at the end of your, your micro teach after your summary. 
Perfect. Okay, right, that's, that's your, my first your point. number one out the way. So my first point is keep it simple. Um, I guess it sounds slightly random, but from my experience over the years, um, where sort of micro teachers become quite tricky and it goes a bit wrong is when people try to cover too much yeah. within a 15 minute period. Um, if you think about it, if it's 15 minutes, um, you've got like an intro, brief icebreaker, um, then you get into the body and you've got to have some form of summary and assessment. So, you know, you don't actually have that much time. The main bulk of the uh, micro teach isn't that long. Mm -hmm. um, so if you really, if you're choosing a subject, you should choose a subject that, you know, it's a little snippet of that subject. Um, we know from experience, a lot of people deliver a topic that they're really enthusiastic and passionate about and they want to share it with everyone. But in reality, in 15 minutes, you can only deliver um, a certain amount of content. So yeah, we'd certainly advise to choose a subject that you're very knowledgeable about, you know a lot about, um, but it is important that you don't try to cover too much. And you know, you're coming back to Nick's point about the structure, okay, you're gonna pick one, two, three maybe, objectives, what you want people to be able to achieve, um, but don't try and you know, bite off too much. Um, and in that, well, when you start planning, that should become clear. So, you know, I've, I've had experience where someone's tried to condense down like a half day manual handling course into yeah. 15 minutes. When in reality, if you're going to focus on manual handling, you'd focus on one small element of that sort of half day course um, and focus on it. Yeah, absolutely. Another micro teach that springs to mind, which was very good, is uh, learning how to perform CPR. So first aid is, is so broad and just focusing on the compressions element of, of CPR. So demonstrating how to do that, letting everyone practice and giving each other some peer feedback as well. And, and that was 15 minutes or even how to make a paper aeroplane. Surprisingly, all of that and involving perhaps a competition as well, it does take up 15 minutes. So you do have to allow um, everyone to, to participate, um, to give each other peer feedback, for example. Mm. So keeping it simple is absolutely key. Yeah, and if, if when you come to do your micro teach, you're not sure whether your subject, you know, is simple enough or, you, or whether you're gonna get it done in the 15 minutes, you know, contact us or ask your, your trainer on the course and, and, and gather our thoughts, essentially that's what we're here for. Fantastic, so we're just gonna move on to my next point. We have uh, enthusiasm. So enthusiasm or passion for your subject. So I think this is this is absolutely crucial. So um, a good hallmark of any teacher or trainer is to be a motivator, to be to be passionate about your subject, to have enthusiasm, and that's going to rub off on your your learners. So it's going to engage them into your your lesson. So as we know, the micro teach day, um, they can be quite a lot of teaching within those days. And if you have got um, good eye contact and passion for your subject, it's going to make all of your learners, you know, sit up in their chair and really take note of uh, what's being, uh, being taught, essentially. So just going back to Tom's point, if you have a very simple idea, that is going to make you more confident, more relaxed, and that's going to make you more enthusiastic, okay? And if you have enthusiasm, your learners are going to, to buy in. Uh, so if you are perhaps embarking on some group work or paired work, discussions, activities, debates, if you're enthusiastic, this is going to make your learners more relaxed. They're going to open up and share opinions as well. And that's what we like to see. So if you're relaxed, if you have a smile on your face, you welcome learners into the room, for example, you have a fun icebreaker, then that's going to set the tone and it's going to be ultimately an enjoyable experience. Yeah, definitely. I mean, enthusiasm, passion for your subject. I mean, everyone remembers their teachers, you know, from school, from college, from private training courses that really inspired them. And it's generally because someone's, you know, they genuinely want to be there. They love their subject. They want to teach their students. And so passion is in, enthusiasm is infectious. So, yeah, you know, pick, pick a subject that you actually enjoy and you've got a passion for. And I think, you know, that's... That's uh, certainly a good sort of start to the planning of your micro teach. And I guess just my last point with uh, enthusiasm as well. Um, mistakes do happen um, on your, you know, uh, on on micro teach days. So you might have a slight hiccup with your 
with your lesson, but don't let, let, let that put you off, essentially. If you, you know, just take your time, um, overcome perhaps uh, the slight mistake, and you still have that enthusiasm, then you're still going to deliver a fantastic micro teach as well. So my advice is to try and, and really have that, that high energy and enthusiasm uh, for your subject. Okay, right, good, thanks Nick. So my second one is involve your learners. Um, which I guess again might sound fairly obvious, but um, well, I guess what we're getting at here is, is get your learners involved in the micro teach session nice and early. Um, I've watched, as I said, lots and lots of micro teachers, and someone, someone might start talking, the, the, the liver at the beginning, and and sort of aim objectives and go off on their subject, and it could be sort of five minutes in, and they haven't actually really interacted um, mm. with their learners. Obviously, we know you've only got fifteen minutes, so you're not going to do a, a thorough initial assessment or diagnostic assessment. However. You can quickly whiz round in sort of a 30 seconds a minute if you know you decided you're delivering your subject on um, to something to do with dogs. You could easily whiz round, you know, how many people, six, ten people in the in the room, what's your name, have you ever owned, live with a dog, if so, what breed, and that wouldn't take long and you just get that interaction going. I also find if you get people interacting and your learners talking and interacting with yourself early on, then it actually increases your confidence. It doesn't feel quite so, because a lot of people, there's a lot of nervous energy with a micro teacher on the day. And if you interact early, I think it does sort of ease the tension a little bit. Um, so get them involved. It's not 15 minutes of you talking and delivering to your students. It's not really a lecture style. Some people may choose more of a lecture style for their micro teach, but really what we want to see is sort of group activities tasks, different challenges for them to do. So get, get them involved, whether it be, you know, you asking them direct questions, whether you putting them in groups and giving them a sort of activity to do. Um, but, you know, don't put all the pressure on you. You're not standing there for 15 minutes having, having to deliver everything. Um, get them involved. A lot of it could be, particularly when you're teaching adults, you're facilitating their learning. So you set them a challenge or a task and you draw sort of, information and knowledge out of them from their experiences so certainly an important one and, and try and get get interacting and get them involved as early as possible yeah absolutely i agree i think by being a facilitator you can ultimately take a step back you can relax you know you can take a breath um pause and see how your your lesson is is unfolding so you can obviously see how the group are interacting the group dynamics of course, you can um, approach different groups to see how, they're, uh, how they are. Um, are they on task? Do they need any further clarity from you? But definitely after your aims and objectives, you've done an icebreaker, you might have obviously been talking for a while. So it's nice to have that break and set a, a group task as well. So I'm okay. just gonna move on to my next point. So my point is, is number three, we have VARC. So VARC is a uh, learning, uh, style, okay, it's a teaching and learning theory, okay, and this was invented by Fleming, okay, and as we can see, V-A-R-K stands for visual, oral, uh, R is read and write, and K is for, for kinesthetic, so very similar to your point, Tom, involving your learners, um, with, with teaching and learning, as we know, everyone learns in a different style, and my point here is that if we can promote a range of different activities, we are going to engage um, our learners as, as much as possible. So having perhaps uh, visual uh, screens, it could, be, it could be PowerPoint or having your aims and objectives on the board, perhaps say even having pictures in front of you or displays around, it's gonna spark those, that interest of learners that most like to, to learn through visual cues. Um, so oral, ensure that there's lots of questions to, to learners, discussions, okay, and that once again is going to engage uh, learners further. Reading and writing, okay, things like handouts are going to be useful, okay, opportunities to perhaps read points on the, the board, okay. And finally, kinesthetic, any sort of practical task as well. So just going back to CPR, that was a great activity for kinesthetic learners. So don't be afraid to get learners out of their seats if you want them to perhaps demonstrate something um, practical, then I'm sure they'll be really, really thankful for that. 
um, but this is one of my key points. Try uh, to try to embed each of these points during uh, the the micro teach, and you're hitting all bases there of the different learning styles. Yeah, yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, I mean, it's obviously. It's a theory, it might sound quite theoretical, but it, it, it's quite simple to adopt. In essence, mm. you're just saying that you appreciate the fact that if you've got 10 people in a room, they don't all learn in the same manner. Um, people learn in, you know, they have different styles, and you just try to accommodate them within what you're doing. Um, mm. Having both taught in sort of further education for a lot of years, we, we're fully aware of that over the years where you come across some learners that are predominantly visual or predominantly kinesthetic, both taught on sports we had a lot of practical kinesthetic learners and it's just trying sometimes to sort of you know if you're with learners for a long longer term to sort of work out how you can sort of stimulate them and sort of you know get them learning but on your micro teach what we're saying really is just don't just adopt a one-dimensional approach um mm -hmm. so don't just talk at them for 15 minutes don't just you know show them slides and, and, and just talk through them try to actually um, have, have a varied style essentially. If you've got a varied teaching style, then you're likely to sort of meet um, everyone's needs. Um, we know it's only 15 minutes, um, it's only so much you can do, but it's, it's, it's just having an appreciation as well, really, that not everyone learns in the same manner. But yeah, a good point. So, yeah, thanks, Nick. Um, so, my third point I've got is ongoing assessment. Um, so, assessment. For those of you that are aware, it's obviously a, a stage on the teaching cycle, um, you know, which would normally come towards the end of a lesson when you're checking learning or the end of a course. But I've put ongoing assessment because really, in, in reality, a good teacher will always be assessing, um, sort of formally and informally. So I mentioned, you know, a moment ago about just finding out a little bit about their previous knowledge. That's an initial assessment. So at the beginning. Does anyone know anything about my topic? They might not, not a problem, but it's quite good to know that. And then as you go through, you want to be questioning them and, and, and sort of digging and asking, you know, do, do you understand, do you follow? Here's a question for you, here's an activity. And, you know, a good teacher would know as they taught a lesson whether people were understanding and following them. Um, I'm not saying you're doing a test every 10 minutes, that's not what we mean, but you, you've got a genuine interest, you know your room, you're out and about within the room and you're, you're finding out, do people understand, do they follow you? Um, and then on your micro teach towards the end, what we would call the summative assessment, you like have some form of questions, quiz, activity, where you, you're trying to basically prove your objectives that we mentioned earlier. Um, so now if you've got two or three objectives that you want people to achieve, your assessment should be based around those. And if you said, okay, well, they're gonna be able to demonstrate how to do this, then your summative assessment should essentially basically, um, you know, make sure that is actually occurring. Nick. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was a very good point you mentioned there about initial assessment. So the very start of a micro teach, finding out your, your learner's previous experience, they could be very knowledgeable of your subject and you can use that to your advantage. So you could have obviously used them as perhaps um, a support, a supporter within your 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 micro teach. So you could uh, you could ask uh, that learner to perhaps share those experiences as well. So perhaps they could do perhaps a demonstration with you. They might be of course be very very confident in your subject area, and that's going to be a, a really good addition to your micro teach as well. So I totally agree with on ongoing assessments. Okay. Fantastic. Fourth point, then, My fourth point is eye contact and body language. So I think one really good hallmark of any teacher or trainer um, is, is eye contact with, with learners, okay, and having a, a positive uh, body language as well. So just being open, okay, not being uh, closed, so not having uh, perhaps a slightly negative uh, body language with your, your arms crossed. Obviously, it's a very, I would say, a nervous experience. We, we don't want it to be a nervous experience with your micro teach, but um, do your best uh, to try and make eye contact with all of your, your learners. We've seen previous micro teachers where um, the teacher has focused perhaps on one side of the room and has forgotten about the other side as well. So make sure that you are checking in with each of your, your learners, okay? And also just having the, 
an open open stance okay standing up straight um, just leaning in you know and that's just showing that your your learners to your learners um, that you know you are interested in them so obviously smile perhaps nods as well so to recognize that you are agreeing with their their answer their response perhaps and uh, yeah ultimately uh, just be relaxed as well so the more relaxed you are okay that's going to show in your in your body language and posture essentially and uh, you'll enjoy the experience a lot more yeah no i agree agree with that definitely nick um sort of yeah you can give a, a lot away with your body language um and and also you know if you're if you set a group activity during the micro teach don't just sort of sit down at the front and think oh i'm just gonna you know i've got yeah. a couple of minutes now you know be out and about be circulating sort of listening to um you know what different groups are coming up with um nodding commenting you know just actually show a genuine interest and i think you know anyone would would appreciate who's been involved in good training teaching over the years um it's clearly it, it's it's obvious when your trainer is interested and they're mm. you know they're listening they're, they know the room and they're sort of um you know it's, it's just positivity essentially isn't it and it's sort of uh you know it's infectious and, and, and you you learn as you you learn you want your learners to think that you are actually interested in them you're interested in helping teach them and, and their success and and uh, and what they've got to contribute to the session yeah absolutely give give lots of praise as well so give lots of praise say well done and also um, as you said there it's an enjoyable experience so if you have a laugh you know with with the groups you know that's going to once again uh, make it an enjoyable experience um, as well Okay, um, so my number four is timings. Good one. Um, Good one. So, yeah, timings, I mean, you've only got 15 minutes. I often say to people, one of the more tricky sort of tasks is the fact that you've only got 15 minutes mm -hmm. um, to deliver your micro teach. So that's not long. It's not very often you deliver a subject in 15 minutes in reality. Um, obviously, the, the idea of the micro teach is that you can show, you can you know, a start, a beginning and an end in 15 minutes shows that you've got the sort of skills to be able to impart your knowledge. Um, but you don't want to be 10 minutes into your micro teach and find out, oh, actually, I've only covered my first activity. I, you know, I've only got five minutes to go. And it might sound mad, but a lot of people have turned to me on micro teachers and said, oh, you know, how long have I got thinking they're only a few minutes in? And I'll be like, well, you're 11, 12 minutes in. Yeah. Because you, because you are a bit nervous, not necessarily, some people aren't, but quite, there is normally, quite a few nerves and maybe the clock and keeping an eye on your time is drifts off a bit. But this is why that's important on your lesson plan. It's, you know, the first column, how long are you going to spend on your set different sections within your lesson? I'm not saying, you know, you've, you've got to stick, you know, if I said I'm doing two minutes on that, I can't do three minutes. We're not saying that. Obviously it is a guide, but you need to have an idea where you're up to. Um, if there's a clock in the training room, obviously have that. Some people can start a stopwatch on the front desk and just so they know they've got their 15 minutes. We don't shut you down on 15 minutes. Obviously there's a, a degree of sort of um, versatility on it, but you want to know where you're up to. And you know, if you said you're gonna do your intro in two minutes and your next section is gonna be five minutes, you want to know roughly where you are when you're on track, um, which is like, you know, anyone who's taught, if you've got an hour lesson, a two hour lesson, a 15 minute micro teach, it's good to have a rough idea where you're up to. And I think that comes in the planning really. That's why if you're organized and you plan it properly, maybe you run through how long activity is going to last. Sometimes you do an activity as a teacher and it, it goes completely different to what you plan. It could be double the time, half the time. Okay. So that, that does happen, which will come, probably come on to my fifth point in a moment, but, but timings wise, Plan, have a think about how long you're spending on each activity and keep an eye on the clock during um, the micro teach so you don't drift too far away from that. You want to be able to get your summative assessment in at the end and your sort of summary. Um, you don't want to run out of time for that. Yeah, I agree. Very, very important. I think when you come on to 13 minutes into your micro teach, that's when you should have the remaining two minutes just for a summary of your, your aim, objectives, any questions uh, from the group as well. Um, I always think a, a short quiz at the end um, is going to be a good method there, a good summative method uh, to, to include to end uh, the micro teach. Okay, um, I will go on to my, uh, my fifth and final point. We have ICT and technology okay so just for for this point here um if you are using any ict 
uh, technology or you're wanting to promote uh, learners' digital skills, which is fantastic. You don't have to include technology or ICT, it is optional, okay, within your micro teach. But my advice is to, to check um, your ICT, perhaps if you're looking to show a video um, that the video is, is working, okay, Wi Fi, of course, and also that you watch your video, your content all of the way through. Okay, so make sure you do that. You don't want to show a video that you haven't watched before uh, for the first time in a, a micro teach as well. If you're showing perhaps a video, uh, make sure that it's no more than, than literally one to two minutes. So we want to see you teaching within your lesson. We don't want to see a, a five or six minute video that's simply too long as well. Um, another key bit of advice as well, if you're showing perhaps um, a video, okay, you could have um, perhaps a, a document where learners are perhaps writing down the key points. There could be some questions so they're active in when they are watching um, the, the video as well. Um, and also with, my, uh, with mobile phone apps, okay, so it's such as Socrative and, and small apps and games, which are fantastic. We've seen lots of uh, micro teach lessons uh, with uh, the use of mobile phones, fantastic. You could um, pair up learners, so some learners might not, not be confident on phones here, but if they have uh, perhaps a, you know working in pairs with someone who is confident, then that could uh, help the flow of the, the lesson there. But my advice is just to check your IT before you show it to a group. Yeah, I guess yeah. Don't, don't, if you're watching this and thinking, oh, I don't, don't really need technology or I need to show a PowerPoint and my mic, that's no problem at no all. Problem. Some of them are quite practical, it's not a problem. But from our experience, it can be the tech issues mm. that sort of cause problems and stop your flow on micro teachers. So if you are doing slides or you're doing videos or you're embedding stuff or you're using an app or you're whatever technology it might be, ICT, I think the most important thing is probably to run it through, maybe try it at home if you're family or friends or something beforehand or even in the workshop on the course the day before just you know you don't want to you know someone sort of thinks they put their video in their powerpoint it's going to work make sure it's working beforehand just check out any of that stuff um beforehand that's sort of our, that's sort of our advice but yeah good point nick so my final one um which we touched on a little bit i guess throughout this sort of first podcast is versatility um don't panic if things don't quite go to plan. That is the teaching and training world. Um, can, ICT could fail, something could occur. Um, as I said, you might plan a session, it doesn't go to plan, it doesn't take as long as you thought, it takes longer. Um, you know, and it'll, it'll, you're, you're on this course, Level 3 World Education and Training, because you're an aspiring trainer. You're not the finished article and the idea is to do this to actually try and improve your confidence and learn from it so it's not necessarily you know you can't criticize yourself because things don't go exactly how you wanted them to so sort of you know be relaxed and and, and if things don't go to plan okay it might be disappointing but you can put that right in the future um, but learn from it and don't panic um, as we said sometimes people are a bit nervous and if you know the, the way you would sort of adapt and and deal with setbacks is a sort of key part of being a successful trainer and teacher. Um, and you're unlikely, okay, you might get the odd micro teachers absolutely perfect, polishes, finish on, you know, bang on 15 minutes, tick, 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 tick. But in reality, you know, a lot of times things will, will change and it won't quite go to plan. And I think it's important that you, you appreciate that before you get going. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I think versatility is, is key and ultimately just enjoy the experience. If you wanted to, you could perhaps put down some um, contingency plan ideas. So if you think something might not work, if you're, if you're putting an idea forward to your learners and it doesn't get the best uh, take up or, or buy in from your learners within the group or they don't quite understand it, Think of another avenue, a contingency plan, something that you can put to them, uh, which makes it easier for them to, to understand. And that's going to help your, your planning side as, as well. Um, but ultimately, mistakes do happen. I've made so many of them during my, my time teaching with, with lessons. But if you are relaxed, OK, if you say it's not a problem, uh, we're going to move on with this next activity, then it will go a lot smoother than, than you think, ultimately. 
Okay, um, so that sort of sort of brings us to the end of this sort of first uh, podcast um, at sort of Train Aid HQ. We hope you've enjoyed it um, and find it useful. Our plan is that we'll be doing these um, regularly, both Nick and myself, um, and probably have some sort of guests along at times. Um, please sort of like and subscribe um, the Train Aid YouTube channel, and, and yeah, and look out for more sort of content like this. Thank you very much for, for watching everyone. Hope to see you on one of our courses soon. Okay, cheers Nick. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Tom.